is gonna be a little bit cray. to be doing a first trimester recap for you guys i know the location is a bit cray right now i'm upstairs in my kitchen using natural lighting kids are up running around like crazy that is all because we are currently doing a renovation of our entire basement suite As some of you guys might know we've mentioned it before in vlogs and i've mentioned it on this channel we rent from my parents they live upstairs we live downstairs it works great for us and our situation works great for everybody. So when we announced that we were having a third baby, before we even thought about having a third baby, we knew that, well, knew we were going to move. Once we uh, actually got pregnant and once it, like a good place came up, we were planning on moving to a place with more rooms. We announced to them and once we started talking about it and saying, oh, well, we're planning on moving, they were like, don't move. Like, we want you to stay here. And we were like, we can absolutely not do it with two bedrooms. Like, that's not gonna happen. And they offered to renovate for us. We are taking half of our old rec room, which was huge to begin with. It was like three times the size of a normal, like, living room. And we are making a third bedroom. So we're gonna have a girl's room, a boy's room, and then our room. So it depend on what this baby is, it is to see who they're bunking with. Oh, this video is gonna be a little bit cray. So that's why I'm not in my normal like filming setup. Um, it's also why I don't have my normal lights because those were packed away accidentally with all of the rest of our stuff that needed to be packed away so we could do the reno. So all my lights were packed away. So I have to deal with natural lighting, which also me means my kids are up because I can't film at night if I'm using natural lighting. So. It's kind of a hot mess, but I knew if I didn't do this video now, it wouldn't get done. I haven't uploaded a video in like two months or more. Um, I think the last time I uploaded, I was around six weeks pregnant, and now I am about to be 15. I'm gonna be 15 weeks tomorrow. Um, and we're leaving on a trip in like four days, and I'm not gonna be able to upload, I think, the whole time I'm there. So um, it's kind of necessary to do this video now. Especially since when we get back, we are doing the gender reveal. So I just, I wanted to update you guys. I've also been getting so many nice messages and comments and everything from you guys. I just, I wanted to update you guys. So I apologize for this crazy hot mess video, but if you can put up with it, I'll be doing a uh, recap and a Q&A. Um, I guess not a Q&A, because like, I'm not going to be asking, like a, answering a bunch of questions. I'm just going to be answering like the most frequently asked questions over these past two months um, and just kind of give you guys some answers as to what's going on. For the recap portion, so basically I dropped off from filming videos, uploading videos, editing videos, the whole shebang around six weeks and that's really because I started feeling really just all of the first trimester kind of just hit me at six weeks. I started feeling incredibly sick and nauseous, extremely fatigued, and those two were the biggest ones, but those were also the most hard hitting. Um, because if some of, as some of you guys might know, I solo parent a lot of the time. My husband works away for two weeks at a time. So it's not like when I'm feeling sick, I can be like, honey, you can put the kids to bed tonight, or you can make supper, or you can do this or that or whatever. It's me, and that's it. And um, as I started to feel sick, and I haven't been, for those of you guys who are looking for a reference, I haven't been as sick as I was with my first, um, which I had hypermesis gravidarum with her. I was back and forth to the hospital, getting fluids, and I couldn't work, like it, just all this stuff. And then with Everett, I barely had any nausea. And I feel like this time around, it's it's like, it's been bad, but it's not been unbearable. I'm still able to like keep all my children alive um, and fed and like not die all day. So like, that's fine. Um, but it's still been like bad. Like I've been pretty sick. Light, luckily it's lightened up a lot. Um, at this point I'd say I just get nauseous um, if I eat a meal. Like sitting up at one of these kitchen chairs is terrible. I can't eat sitting up straight. I have to eat like reclined or lying down. Um, but if I eat sitting up straight, then I get really nauseous or just like really fragrant smells. But other than that, I'm doing pretty good right now in terms of just like everyday nausea, it's not there anymore, which is awesome. And really why I stopped filming and uploading videos is really just because I started to feel so sick and nauseous and it's been, it was rough. Like, and I, I don't wanna complain because I truly am so grateful to be pregnant. We tried for a long time for this baby. I knew how hard this was gonna be, guys. Like, 
You don't have to tell me. Like, I know that being pregnant with two under three is hard. Like, I, I got that. I, got, I signed up for this. I knew it was gonna be hard. But just because you go into something knowing it's going to be hard doesn't make it any less hard. I have to say now I feel like it's been a lot better now that I'm not as nauseous um, or as extremely tired. It came to a point where, like I said, I'm solo parent, so it's not like I can push this off onto somebody else. So when like the going gets tough, you gotta sacrifice. You gotta cut stuff out. And basically I cut out all of my hobbies. I cut out, like I didn't go out anywhere. I didn't do anything with friends. I just like, I survived and I kept my kids alive. And that's what I did. And I, I don't regret it at all, but it's, like I said, it's just something I had to do to just like, keep everyone going is I had to literally cut out every other obligation I had in my life. I do believe I've been managing solo parenting fairly well. A lot better than I thought I would, honestly. Um, just because when I was pregnant with Everett, I had a really hard time. And I honestly think that a lot of it, and I wasn't solo parenting back then. It was just my husband was working 12 hour days, like seven days a week back then. <laughs> So, but he was still coming home every night. I think the difference is with Everett's pregnancy, I don't think I was fully prepared for how hard it was going to be. When we got pregnant with Everett, Audrey was seven months old. She wasn't crawling yet. She wasn't, or maybe she was like eight months old, seven or eight months old. She wasn't crawling yet. She wasn't walking yet. She wasn't mobile and getting into things and ca causing me to have to exert a lot of energy <laughs> yet. I don't think I was fully prepared for how hard it was going to be. And then as it got harder, I kind of just became really resentful and upset and disappointed because I was almost expecting a second pregnancy like my first and I don't know why, but I just, I went into my second pregnancy thinking like, oh great, this is gonna be just like my first pregnancy. Not exactly, but you know what I mean? Like I had the same kind of expectations and when that wasn't the case, I was very like bitter and resentful. I think now, because I had that experience, this time I went into this pregnancy being very aware of how hard it is to parent while pregnant. I think it's just because I went in with that expectation, things have been really great. It's been, um, like I said, it was hard during the first trimester, but now it's just really nice and I'm able to be happy and just really enjoy this as this probably will be our last pregnancy, but I'll get this on, get onto that later when I answer some questions. But I'm just, it's been really great, even solo parenting. Like I miss Lane like crazy when he's gone. I really, some days I really do hate him being gone because I just, not so much that I wish he was here to help, but I just wish he was here to experience these things with me. Like the baby started kicking recently, like the last couple weeks. And it's not like kicking, kicking. It's like, I think they just like hit a wall in there. But, <laughs> um, I, I wish he was here to be able to experience that and I wish he was just here on a day-to-day -day basis. Like a couple days ago was Father's Day and he wasn't here and it was just, it's hard. It's hard on those days for him not to be here. Um, so there's days like that where I'm like, why aren't you home? I wish you were home. Um, and of course all the pregnancy hormones don't help that. My early nesting did stop. I'd say around, around the time that I started getting really sick. I'm thinking it's just because I was so sick. When I was pregnant with Audrey, I coped with my sickness, with buying things for the baby. And that's kind of what made me feel better. And this time around, I didn't cope in the same way. And it's just, I almost like just didn't feel like buying anything. I was like, I don't want to deal with that. I don't want to look up stuff. Um, I don't want to buy stuff, whatever. Like I just, I didn't want to deal with any of it. Just now, these last couple weeks, I've been getting back into like looking up things and wanting to buy stuff. Cause like we do need a lot of stuff for this baby, which I will get to. I didn't post this anywhere on social media. Um, I don't know, I just wasn't feeling it at the time. At 11 weeks, I experienced some heavy cramping and, um, <laughs> hello. Um, I experienced some heavy cramping and light bleeding and I was extremely nervous. As a mom who's miscarried before, it was extremely nerve wracking. I ended up going to the hospital. They checked everything out and I was there for like six hours and everything was fine with baby. Um, everything was just fine. They have no explanation as to why it happened, um, but it, everything was fine. It was definitely scary, um, but at that point, I just kind of kept reminding myself in my head, like there's a 3% chance that I'm losing the baby. Like it's it's gonna be okay. Like I'm going to be fine. Lane wasn't here. My parents were watching the kids, so I was all by myself. Um, and I think that's the part that made it scarier. It was that I was all by myself. 
Sorry, my kids are just talking to each other very loud. Two days later, I also had an ultrasound to reconfirm, and that was our first ultrasound. One sec, I'm going to pull up some pinkies. Um, but anyway, we had our first ultrasound two days later, and baby was looking great. Um, they're actually measuring about six weeks ahead right now, but my doctor doesn't want to officially move my due date yet, just as they don't know for sure or anything. So this was a picture from that ultrasound. And I was about, I was 11 weeks, two days, but they were measuring 11, no, 12 weeks, one day. So, sorry, if you guys can't see that because of the glare, I apologize, but they're so cute. So now I'm 15 weeks or I guess 14 and a half and I'm doing really great. Um, I'm feeling good for the most part. I of course have some days I'm not feeling the best. I feel like gross or I feel, uh, today it's actually really freaking warm. It's 31 degrees. <laughs> it's sweating. Sorry, I'm from Northern Canada. So like half the year we have minus 30 and then half the year we have plus 30. It's like, it's, it's very warm today in my opinion. Um, so I'm like sweating even with the AC on, I'm like sweating to death. There's days like day, today where I'm just uncomfortable. Um, the last couple weeks I've been having um, some pain. My doctor just says that it's probably from like my organs moving, um, which I would probably agree with because the only spot where I'm having the most pain is where my gallbladder used to be. Um, I got my gallbladder removed after my daughter, my first baby. Um, and in Everett, I had the same problem, like as the organs were shifting to make room for baby, it was painful. So I'm thinking that's just kind of what's going on. That's my doctor's theory anyway. Now, back to, like I was saying, with products and stuff for baby. So last couple weeks, I've been really like powering on the research of products and just different stuff we need because there's three factors coming in here as to why we need so much freaking stuff for this third baby. First of all, after two kids, a lot of our stuff uh, broke or was worn down or is gross. So things like our car seat, our single stroller, the bassinet, the swing, the bouncer, all of that is either broken or just completely gross and to the point that I wouldn't want another baby in it. So all of those things need to be replaced. Second of all is after Everett, I had a weird month period where I was just like so traumatized. I didn't want to have any, I thought for sure he was going to be our last kid during that month. I was like, nope, I can't do this anymore. Like this is not happening again. I got rid of a majority of our newborn stuff during that time. I also got rid of all of my breastfeeding and pumping stuff um, right after I finished that because it was just so uh, bitter. I was just so bitter about it that I wasn't able to nurse him that I literally sold all the stuff that I'd bought regarding that. Um, so a lot of those items, like things like newborn clothes, maternity clothes, all that kind of stuff, I sold immediately after he was born and now am regretting it heavily. <laughs> Um, and then the last thing is we do have a couple items that the kids are still using. Everett lost his ball inside a cupboard and thought the best idea was to haul everything out of the cupboard to get the ball. Toddler logic. There's just a few items that Everett or Audrey are still using. So when you compile all of that together, we have very little for this baby. Over the last few weeks, even during my, like the beginning of my first trimester, I was looking up products, adding them to our Amazon baby registry. Um, we don't use a baby registry as like a traditional registry just because where we live, people don't really do baby registries. <laughs> like it's kind of rude to be like here, at least it's like considered rude to be like, here's a list of stuff that we want you, uh, you to buy us. So um, people don't do them here. So we just, we, we've never used it for that. We use it more of a shopping list, which I highly suggest all parents do if you wanna do a shopping list for baby, or just kinda of keep track of all the stuff that you're wanting to buy. At, I highly suggest making a baby registry because at the end, or I think it's like a month or two before your due date, you get a usually discount code to use on whatever store you choose. We do ours through Amazon because like Amazon is life. I will leave that down below if you guys want any ideas of the best products. I've done a ton of research. Uh, so if you guys are wondering like what we're hoping to buy for baby number three, if you're looking for ideas, if you're pregnant yourself and you're like, well, what the heck do I buy? Um, because this baby registry is basically like a first time mom one because we need a lot of stuff. If you are a first time mom and you're like, what the heck do I put on my baby registry? What do I need? What do I need to shop for? Check it out because I have all this stuff on there. Oh, so I'll leave it down below just in case you guys want to check it out. 
get some ideas. And then for our gender reveal, that's the last part of the recap. I just want to mention that our gender reveal is the week after we get back. Um, I'm really excited to find out what it is. I've honestly been putting off buying a lot of stuff until we find out if it's a boy or a girl. Just because this time around, I really want to go heavy into the gender specific stuff. With my first two, I was really nervous about buying uh, gender specific. I wanted to buy a lot of stuff gender neutral just because we knew we wanted more kids. So I wanted to buy everything gender neutral so that way it could fit whatever baby came next. But this time I'm all about it. Like if we have a girl, everything is gonna be big. I can guarantee it. My sister's really excited because this is her first time have hosting the gender reveal. My mom did it with Audrey and then with Everett. Um, as some of you guys might remember, the tech just randomly told us <laughs> when we were planning on doing a gender reveal. So we ended up finding out. I'll probably film it for you guys to take lots of pictures of that whole shebang. Um, so anyway, let's get into the questions. So for one of the biggest questions I've gotten is why haven't you been uploading? What's going on? Is everything okay? Um, I answered a lot of this in my recap portion, but basically I've just been feeling really sick, unmotivated and exhausted. Um, I do hope to be starting regular uploads now, somewhat regular, as regular as I can get. Now, this is one that I got and I really wanted to clarify. Um, a few of you guys asked or just kind of implied in uh, comments or questions or whatever, um, just is this pregnancy the result of the live pregnancy test I uploaded a couple weeks, or not a couple weeks, a month or so before I announced. And that is absolutely not the case. Um, that live pregnancy test, that negative live pregnancy test was from two cycles before we got pregnant with this baby. Um, I would never do that to you guys. I would feel, sorry, my daughter's clicking her tongue. I wanted to make sure Bud wasn't getting into anything. Um, but this pregnancy was from two cycles before. Um, I personally would not feel right doing that, uploading a negative. No, no, up, up, up. Um, I personally wouldn't feel right doing that, uploading a negative test, kind of just for sympathy when I knew I was pregnant. I would personally find that really wrong to do that. Um, so I, that is not the case at all. I just wanted to clarify that because uh, I couldn't imagine doing that. <laughs> just like looking for sympathy when I knew it was positive. I, to me, that's just like a well slimy. I have gotten a few questions just asking like, is this our last baby? We are kind of like very, very, both me and Lane are extremely settled on this being our last. Um, we are, we're very confident in that. We're just really happy with the two that we have now and then this third one we feel like we'll really just round out our family. Um, so we do plan on like exercising some permanent birth control <laughs> um, probably soon after this baby's born. So we'll see what happens, but I extremely highly doubt it. This will definitely be our last baby. I have gotten some questions about why I didn't post a live pregnancy test for this pregnancy. Basically, that just goes back to how we found out we were pregnant. So it's a little bit of a long story. Around seven or eight DPO, I started to get the feeling that this really could be it, that I could be pregnant. I ended up ordering some new pregnancy tests from Amazon um, and on that day. And they weren't scheduled to come in. I think I was going to be 12 DPO um, because it was over Easter weekend. I think I ordered them like on like Thursday before Easter. They weren't going to be coming in until the Tuesday after. So I was like, okay, that's fine. I can take them on 12 or 13 DPO. Like, that's fine. I'll just wait till then because why would I want a negative result anyway and then have to do the line eyes because that's what I always did. And I was like, you know what? I'll just wait until it's like for sure going to be negative or positive and not somewhere in between. I ordered the tests and Easter Sunday, we wake up, we do the Easter baskets with the kids and then we get a knock on the door and I go down and I answer the door and it's Amazon, my Amazon package with my pregnancy tests. So I bring them downstairs to Lane and I'm like, how the hell did these show up today? Like, A, it's a Sunday. Panda Post does not work on Sundays. And B, it's Easter Sunday. For sure, no one at Canada Post is working Easter Sunday. I was extremely shocked to have been gotten these in the first place. And I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna take one. And at this point, I'd say it's probably around lunchtime. Um, and I was like 100% convinced that this test wasn't gonna be positive. But I was like, you know what, maybe it's a message from Jesus today. I need to take these tests <laughs> on Easter Sunday. As I was going to go take the test, Elaine was like, well, like, do you think it's gonna be positive? And I was like, no. Like, even if I am pregnant, it's probably not gonna be positive. I'm 10 DPO, it's the middle of the day. 
this is gonna be a negative regardless. I don't even, looking back, I don't even know why I was taking the test because I was so convinced it was going to be negative. So of course I didn't set anything up to film because I was just, so, like I was 100% convinced it was going to be negative. And I take the test and I go and I go talk to Lane and the kids and I come back and there's a lot. And I'm like, duh. If, like, and I call Lane in and I'm like, look at that, look at that, it's a line. And because when, as he was walking in, he was kind of convinced that it was gonna be one of those lines that only I can see because it's so faint, but it was actually like a real line. So that's how we found out we were pregnant. I took a digital test two days later, but it, at that point it felt weird like to film because I already knew I was pregnant from the uh, like manual test, I guess, it's not digital. Um, but I already knew I was pregnant, so like I wasn't gonna film that because I felt like that was really weird. That's really why there's no live pregnancy test for this uh, pregnancy. It's just because I <laughs> I was 100% convinced the test was gonna be negative, but it was positive. This about wraps up my first trimester first trimester recap and Q&A. I am hoping to vlog the trip as well. We'll see how that goes, uh, but I am hoping to vlog a bit because my husband's gonna be there and we're kind of used to vlogging as you guys some of you guys might know if you used to watch our vlog channel sorry i've kind of tongue-tied um so i feel like i should just like wrap up the video <laughs> so oh i'm gonna do a bump shot and i'm starting to definitely pop out like i've got i feel like i was probably this big at like 30 weeks with my first um yeah and as you can see i'm wearing shorts because it's sweating to death but yeah Definitely looking pregnant these days. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to give it a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and stay, and stay tuned for the vlogs from our trip and future pregnancy updates. I'll see you guys very, very soon. Bye guys.